Hello everyone, I am Gerardo Gonzalo, my research master student in cognitive and clinical neuroscience at Massachusetts University. I'm currently in developing my master's thesis at the University of Zurich. And today I'm going to talk about the potential of ayahuasca assisted meditation to improve social cognition. Let me start by introducing you the story that many people are suffering right now. And it's a story of anyone who is suffering a mental health disorder. It's true that there are different medications available, specifically uh, targeting the main symptoms of these disorders. However, I think there are two symptoms that we haven't paid much attention to, which are of extreme relevance, which are loneliness and social withdrawal. Because these patients, um, it's true that they are able to overcome the main symptoms of these diseases with uh, the current pharmacotherapies. However, uh, if they are not able to come back to their uh, usual social life, we cannot say that they achieve recovery because we as humans are social species and we really need to uh, have um, a proper way to interact uh, between ourselves. That's why today I want to talk about social cognition, which refers to the different mental operations involved in the reception, processing and use of information in social contexts. Uh, this type of cognition is of extreme relevance because it has shown to be related to mental health and, and physical well-being. However, there are not medications available specifically targeting this type of cognition. And therefore, there exists uh, an urgent need to develop novel therapies uh, which uh, could treat uh, the symptoms related to social cognition and therefore overcome uh, these mental health disorders. In this regard, I found really interesting to talk about social cognition, which refers to the ways in which we create relations and refer to a relation, but in this case, a relation between, a relation between two plants that have shown, shown to be a promising therapy to improve social cognition. These two plants are Shrub and Aliana, which are combined and brewed together, producing the psychedelic drink known as ayahuasca. After being consumed, ayahuasca produce, uh, produce dreamlike states and alter, um, alter, sta uh, alter states of consciousness. And well, because it grows in the Amazon basin, it has been traditionally used in this region uh, with a spiritual and religious, and religious purposes, leading to the creation of different syncretic religions, which mix uh, the use of ayahuasca with elements from previous uh, religious traditions uh, like, uh, like, well, the Santo Daime or the Uñao do Vegetal, which have contributed to the expansion of ayahuasca to Europe or North America. However, uh, one of the main protagonists in, protagonists in this expansion has been the research conducting uh, on ayahuasca, looking at its uh, therapeutic properties. Uh, two studies that I wanted to highlight was these two ones in which they look at the effects of ayahuasca mental health and quality of life and on depression in which ayahuasca has shown promising results. But how does ayahuasca work? How does it produce these effects? So let's look at this pharmacology. So as I told you before, uh, ayahuasca is shaped by uh, shrub, uh, psychotherapeutics, which contains the methyltryptamine, which is an alkaloid that acts as a 5-HT2A agonist. And this mechanism is the responsible of the psychedelic effects of this drink. However, uh, when consumed orally, uh, DMT is degraded by the monoamine oxidase enzyme. Therefore, it's not able to produce its effects. However, in ayahuasca, we also have Paristeropsis capi, which contains the compounds harmine and harmaline, which act as inhibitors of the monoamine oxidase. So they block this enzyme and allow the effects of DMT to take place. Additionally, it also contains tetrahydroharmine, which acts as a serotonin reactive inhibitor, like uh, the same mechanism uh, shared by other antidepressants, such as fluoxetine, for example. And both mechanisms, the inhibition of the MAO, as well as the inhibition of the reactive of serotonin, have shown to indirectly increase the levels of serotonin. Therefore, overall, we see that um, ayahuasca combines two mechanisms of action, the agonism by, for the 5 ht 2 receptor, as well as the increases in serotonin. And I think this is really interesting because if we look at other compounds, such as LSD or psilocybin and MDMA, they also share these mechanisms and they both have shown to modulate social cognition by improving empathy and prosocial behavior. 
Therefore, ayahuasca, which combines both mechanisms, looks really promising to modulate this aspect of cognition. And actually, uh, there's, this is something that has been already studied. However, uh, most of these studies have been developed following a naturalistic or, observ or observational setting, such as the three ones that you can see in the upper part of the image, uh, from which uh, we can suggest that ayahuasca could affect empathy, compassion, and moral behavior. However, there has been only one study developed uh, following a randomized controlled trial in a, in a laboratory setting, which is the gold standard for evidence-based science, in which uh, no significant effects were seen in, um, by in the, effects, in the effects of ayahuasca on um, the recognition of emotions in facial expressions, which is an important aspect of cognition, which allows us to recognize the emotions in the faces of other people. So overall, I think that uh, we don't have uh, enough uh, randomized control settings uh, looking at the effects of ayahuasca. Therefore, if we really want to better assess what the effects of ayahuasca on social cognition are, we really need to develop this type of uh, designs, uh, randomized controlled trials, um, looking at the specific effects of ayahuasca on social cognition in laboratory settings, such as this one that you can see in the image, which is the one that we use in, at Zurich University. However, uh, with the current evidence that we have, uh, other way to look at how ayahuasca could affect social cognition is by looking at the ayahuasca experience. So after consume, ayahuasca, which is characterized by having an unpleasant flavor, tends to produce uh, some nausea and vomiting, but after 30 minutes to an hour, the psychedelic effects start to take place, producing alterations in mood, perception of cognition. And sometimes patients or participants also experience um, autobiographical memories with high emo emotional charts. If participants are able to surrender and accept this type of experience, they, uh, they enter in a state of huge emotional release, which is followed by a transient state of ego dissolution of, uh, or a state of self-transcendence in which participants tend to feel a connectedness of the universe or the cosmic unity of everything. But that's if we only take a look at uh, the intake of ayahuasca. But as I said before, sometimes ayahuasca is also taken in a ritual setting, such as uh, the ones developed by the Santo Daime, uh, as you can see in the image. Uh, and in these rituals, then te they tend to consume ayahuasca uh, while performing different dances or singings. And according to Hartogson, this uh, engages uh, the Santo Daime participants into physical, different physical and mental challenges. And so for you to understand what he means with different physical and mental challenges, I want you to think about how it has to be to be under the effects of ayahuasca while trying to be coordinate and develop the dances that you see in the image or singing to this type of songs. And well, the ritual tend to last for four hours. So I guess now you understand the mental challenges that take place during the Santo Daime experience. And I think this is really interesting because if we look at the definition of meditation, we see that it also involves uh, different mental training practices. And meditation has also shown to affect social cognition by improving empathy, compassion, and prosocial behavior. Therefore, uh, we can suggest that uh, the Santo Daime were, uh, was mixing the use of ayahuasca with uh, different meditation practices. So to better understand if this combination could have a therapeutic effect, I think we, need, we first need to look at the different similarities and the interactions that they will share. So first, let's look at the similarities. Well, for you to understand the similarities, I first need you to know that the brain is divided or works in multiple large scale connectivity networks. And one of these networks is the default mode network, which comprises the brain regions that you can see in the image. Um, additionally, this region has been involved in mind wandering and self referential processing, and it tends to be overactivated in patients uh, with depressions who tend to 
have over rumination or self negative findings. Interestingly, uh, ayahuasca has shown to decrease the activity of the brain regions involved in this, this network. And uh, this decreased activity has been associated with the state of self transcendence uh, that is induced by ayahuasca. However, it is not the only way to achieve decreases in this network. We can also achieve decreases in this network through other practices such as meditation, which also shown to decrease the activity of this network. Therefore, we see that at neurophysiological level, uh, both practices same the similarity of decreasing the activity in the default mode network. But additionally, the ayahuasca state uh, induces uh, a state of ego dissolution. And some meditative practices tend to promote the disruption of the self as one of their course or main goals to achieve. So we see that it could be similar or the ayahuasca state could help the meditative state. But additionally, um, some meditative practices also promote the centering, which is the ability to detach from our own thoughts or emotions. And when participants take ayahuasca, they tend to see their autobiographical memories from a detached point of view, so away from their emotions. So therefore, we see uh, that indeed they share some similarities. But now let's look at how ayahuasca affects meditation. Well, uh, this is something that has been uh, nicely studied um, and some key features that I want you to get uh, from the first study in, in, what, in which they explore the therapeutic effects of ayahuasca uh, acutely. Um, what they did is that they give um, to participants of ayahuasca ceremony uh, uh, a questionnaire that assess their mindfulness capacity. So mindfulness is a type of meditation that is assessed according to five facets. And when participants took ayahuasca, they tend to increase two of the five facets that which, uh, are used to assess mindfulness, which are non-react and non-judging. And therefore we can see that ayahuasca really improved acutely uh, my, the mindfulness practice. But additionally, ayahuasca also affects the centering, which as I said, is the ability to detach, detach from our own thoughts and emotion, which is not a specific form of mindfulness, but it also shared with other uh, therapeutic practices. So therefore we see that the ayahuasca has some effects on could improve the meditative practice. So now could the meditative, the meditative practice affect the ayahuasca experience? And in this case, this is something that has not been quite study. Uh, there are no studies that have looked at this facet. However, there are some in which they have looked at the effects that meditation could have on psilocybin. For example, this one developed by the group of Griffiths et al., uh, in which they look at the effects uh, that psilocybin in combination with a uh, spiritual supportive group could have by giving uh, psilocybin in different doses to three different groups and under different types of uh, support, the uh, spiritual supports. Um, some key features from this study is that six months after the experience, participants were asked about uh, different things. And in terms of positive behavior changes, participants who took ayahuasca, uh, psilocybin and were a high spiritual support uh, group, uh, they show significant increases in positive behavior changes as compared to the other two groups. Additionally, uh, when assessed how much um, did they meditate four months prior to being asked six months after the experience, um, the group that took the high doses of psilocybin and was, and was under a high spiritual support uh, show significant increases in the number of hours uh, that they meditate as compared to the other two ones, meaning that uh, by combining both practices, uh, it could help people to um, engage more in the, in the meditation practice. So uh, we can say that there are some suggestions pointing to the direction that meditation could have some effects on the ayahuasca experience, but currently there is not evidence that supports this idea. Um, so now that we know uh, the different ways in which they interact and the similarities that both practices share, Let's take a look at the psychological mechanisms that could underlie um, the, the, this combination. And this is something that has been proposed by Payne 
And there are six ways in which the combination could take place. First is the meditative state recognition, meaning that um, the self-transcendent state induced by ayahuasca will allow meditators to recognize the state that some meditative practice want to achieve. Motivation for meditation practice, meaning that by inducing this state of self transcendence, uh, people will try to uh, uh, to look for them through meditation, so they will motivate people to meditate more. Also, uh, psychedelics have shown to improve openness and curiosity, which could uh, allow uh, meditative practitioners to increase the depth of their meditation. Also, uh, if we see that ayahuasca affects compassion, uh, then we can say that it could ease in the, the compassion meditation, which is a very exhausting type of meditation. Additionally, um, psychedelics and non-avoidance, meaning that uh, mindfulness promotes uh, non-avoidance and accepting of the experience, which will allow uh, ayahuasca consumers to reach this state of self-transcendent faster. And finally, sustained psychedelic proximity and generalization, uh, meaning what I have uh, previously mentioned in the, in the previous study, uh, meaning that um, when combined, um, participants will tend to meditate more, and by thus, will sustain the, from the positive therapeutic effects of psychedelics. So that was overall my, le my, my lecture. Uh, the take-home message that I want you to get from it is that ayahuasca meditation improve social cognition related features, that the ayahuasca experience is really similar to the meditative experience, that ayahuasca could improve the meditative capacities, therefore they both look like promising therapies for social cognition, and the future directions that need to be followed, I think, is to develop more randomized controlled trials in laboratory settings, looking at specifically at the effects of ayahuasca on social cognition and the effects of meditation on the ayahuasca experience. So thank you so much for your attention.